On your exam, there is a high likelihood that you will be presented with a clinical vignette of a patient with cardiac pathology, as well as provided a patient on an examination table in the computer module, and you will be given a digital stethoscope for you to move around on their chest to appreciate any abnormal cardiac heart sounds. You will have to integrate the information provided in the vignette with the audio provided to gather the answer. It's important to know where on the chest wall you can best appreciate heart valves as well as their associated murmurs. Here is a diagram from first aid that shows you the areas on the chest wall where you can best appreciate those murmurs. Here in the second intercostal space along the right peristeral border is the aortic area where you can best appreciate the aortic valve and the murmurs associated with the aortic valve. Across the sternum is the pulmonic area, the second intercostal space along the left peristernal border. This is where you can best appreciate the pulmonic valve. Moving down three intercostal spaces, you get to the tricuspid area, which is along the left peristernal border in the fifth intercostal space. Moving laterally to the midclavicular line in the fifth intercostal space is the mitral area, where you can best appreciate the mitral valve and the murmurs associated with that valve. An important concept that you may be tested on regarding auscultation of the heart are particular clinical maneuvers that we as providers can do at the bedside with our patients to augment specific cardiac murmurs. Before we begin discussing these individually, let's establish a few general rules. The most important rule in regards to these clinical maneuvers is that increasing blood flow or maneuvers that increase blood flow across a valve results in increase in murmur intensity. It's sort of common sense here, but it's important to know that when you increase flow of blood across a valve, this will increase, in general, the intensity of the murmur. On the contrary, decreasing flow across cardiac valve results in decrease intensity of the cardiac murmur. As you will see when we discuss these different murmurs, each one will augment blood flow in a particular way by impacting preload, afterload, and venous return. As such, we will see differences and changes in intensity of the murmur on auscultation that will help us narrow down the specific abnormality of that particular heart valve. The four important bedside maneuvers we'll review right now is inspiration, or having the patient take a deep breath in, having them rapidly squat or get down in a squat position. Number three will be Valsalva maneuver, and then number four we'll talk about is hand grip, where the patients make a fist with both their hands to increase afterload on the heart. So let's first review inspiration. The process of inspiration, or having the patient take a deep breath in, results in increased intrathoracic volume. Intrathoracic volume is increased which results in a relative decrease in intrathoracic pressure. This decrease in pressure results in a pressure gradient that causes blood to return to the right side of the heart more readily. So what we see is an increase in venous return because blood from our vena cava and our upper and lower extremities are shunted back into the right atrium in response to this decrease in pressure. This increased venous return results in an increase in preload in many ways, these are the same things. Increased venous return is an increase in preload. And as such, we have an increase in flow or increase in blood flow across the heart valves that will increase the intensity of all cardiac murmurs that involve the right side of the heart, particularly the tricuspid and pulmonic valves. Rapid squatting is the next clinical maneuver that we'll discuss. And it has a similar mechanism of action as the inspiration bedside maneuver in that it increases venous return. It increases our preload and increases our afterload. So if you think about a patient squatting down and flexing and activating their lower extremity muscles, we see blood shunted from the veins of the lower extremities up through the inferior vena cava and into the right atrium to increase our venous return and preload. In addition, through activating our muscles in the lower extremities, we increase the afterload because we are essentially compressing arteries in the lower extremities, resulting in an increased afterload on our heart. This results in increase in intensity of aortic stenosis, mitral regurgitation, and our ventricular septal defect murmurs. This is in direct relation to an increase in afterload, 
that we see this great increase in the ventricular septal defect murmur because we see a greater pressure that the heart is pushing against and as a result more blood is shunted across the ventricular septal defect into the right ventricle or an area of lower pressure rather than going out into the aorta that is relatively higher pressure and even greater of a pressure because of the rapid squatting. The Valsalva maneuver is the next bedside maneuver that we're going to discuss and this maneuver, which is essentially having your patients bear down like they're going to have a bowel movement, results in a decrease in preload. On a patient Valsalva, they increase the intrathoracic pressure relatively, and by increasing the intrathoracic pressure, you result in a decrease in venous return, causing a decrease in the preload. As such, most murmurs are going to decrease in intensity. Going back to our principle of flow is proportional to intensity of the murmur, when you have a decrease in preload, there's a decrease in blood flow across the heart valves, resulting in a decrease in intensity of most murmurs. The one murmur in which the intensity is increased is in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And finally, the hand grip maneuver is a maneuver that results in increase in afterload. Increase in afterload on the heart, and it does not augment venous return or preload. And you can think about it as if you're making a fist with your hand and squeezing down. You're compressing the arterioles and arteries of the hands, and this results in an increase in afterload or pressure that the heart is pumping against. This results in an increase in intensity of mitral regurgitation, and aortic regurgitation, and ventricular septal defect. And similarly to rapid squatting, when you increase the afterload, you increase the pressure at which the left ventricle is having to eject against. And as such, you see blood either regurgitating across the mitral valve, causing an increase in mitral regurgitation intensity, or it's regurgitating back over the aortic valve, causing an increase in intensity of the aortic regurgitation, as well as the ventricular septal defect, as I just explained. As you have an increase in aortic pressure, blood is preferentially shunted to the system of lower pressure, which is the right ventricle, causing an increase in intensity of our ventricular septal defect murmur.